Well, unlike uh, Ted, I am new to many faces in the crowd, and uh, to introduce myself properly, I'm Rob Kluchuk. I'm the technical lead with Syngenta in Western Canada. I'm based out of Regina, and I have the opportunity to present to you uh, one solution to Rhizoctonia that Ted talked about specifically uh, in a product that we call Vibrance. And a lot of the work that our seed care specialists have been involved in in the last two seasons in working with many, many growers, collecting this data that was involved in, in a lot of the surveys that, that Ted talked about. So in, in ways of an agenda, so in the last two seasons, uh, we've been able, we have been able to demonstrate the value of Cruiser Max Vibrance cereals. And what does Vibrance bring to the seed care market? This is a new active very strong on Rhizoctonia. Is it going to add anything as far as um, a crop stand establishment? And does a good crop stand in the end mean a good crop yield? Second thing is quantifying yield. Oftentimes you can show the best possible emergence numbers, but the very first response on a farm call or dealing with, with uh, growers who understand technology will be, great, I understand you have more plants. Does it put more bushels in the bin? and we've got data to back that up too. <coughs> in working with the seed care specialists, they have chosen to work with almost 50 farms in the last two years to test drive this product and test drive Vibrance in the marketplace. I think we're in a good position to say comfortably that we have a good feel for how this product performs in Western Canada, working with 50 growers uh, across the market. We will talk specifically on how this relates to Syngenta brands. I have data, obviously, from a grower that's using a specific competitive brand, but when we went through the data, the elite seed treatment was Cruiser Max cereals, and we'd like to compare to that. This is our view of the trials in the last two seasons in Western Canada. So you have a, uh, where each star was was a location. So we've got a very good view of how Vibrance performs in Western Canada. Ted talked about the trend towards direct seeding and conservation tillage. We have a good view of all these farms uh, and all types of conditions, all soil types, uh, crop rotations. We, we don't like to talk that way, but ultimately in a, in a profit-driven market, crop rotations are shortened. So often, like, like Ted had mentioned earlier, with, with cereal canola, cereal canola, some of these fields had uh, five-year responses where, where they were flip-flopping from cereals to canola. So a, a build-up of, of Rhizoctonia from volunteers and putting strain on those seedlings. And we'll be able to show you some very valid pictures of our experience in the field. This is our treatment list. Uh, and just to give you some flavor of what, what is sold in the marketplace, treatments four and five, dividend XLRTA and Cruiser Max cereals. Cruiser Max cereals with the addition of thiamethoxam to it, that's what we currently sell. When we look at treatments two and three, those were tested as well the last two seasons, but this is what we're moving to. We've got Vibrance Excel, which is your dividend plus Vibrance, uh, with, with alterations of the formulation performs very well. We've got Cruiser Max Vibrance cereals as well, where we add Vibrance to the Cruiser Max formulation. So just to give you a flavor of what will be sold upcoming this year got a number of sites where we would have performed emergence counts, plant stands, uh, was mentioned the importance of stand establishment leading to yield. Um, we will be able to go through those sites and ultimately when you see that the yields and the emergence counts don't perfectly line up, we all know what it's like working with growers that are extremely busy. Sometimes it works out to get that final yield result from the experiment, other times due to extended rains or stress periods, uh, the fields just get harvested and you miss your opportunity. So bottom line, we're very confident in the, in the amount of sites and yields that we do have. When we look in terms of the actual data itself on crop stand establishment, what we're going to show here is a percent increase in stand establishment from Cruiser Max Vibrant cereals. When we compare to untreated, which I believe is our number one competitor in the marketplace, there was a 30% increase in stand establishment. <coughs> That's a very, very strong number in my opinion. 
But when we look to the right, in talking with Ted and the seed care specialists on how this data was accumulated, the, uh, the very last column there talks about the consistency of, of vibrance and how, how vibrance performs. This is the likelihood of a positive response. So when we say almost 90% chance that Cruiser Max Vibrance cereals is going to have a better plant establishment than not treating. So that gives consistency of performance to that number. When I look at when I look at the lower one, where we have Cruiser Max Vibrant cereals against what we believe is the commercial standard Cruiser Max cereals, there was almost 8%, just over 7% response in emergence over our current Cruiser Max cereals, and a 70% likelihood that it was a positive response over Cruiser Max cereals. So when we talk in terms of consistency of vibrance, addition to our product, there is consistency in terms of whether we compare to untreated, whether we compare to Cruise Max cereals. We're getting a stronger plant stand with more plants. So when we talk in terms of great, there's more plants, what does that mean? Is that putting more bushels into the bin? Cruiser Max Vibrant cereals, when we compared to not treating, added five bushels uh, to the bin. So when we talk in terms of um, yield, I think that is showing the benefits of having uh, delayed emergence this spring with cool conditions. The crop sitting there exposed to more chances of being infected, and that's where the vibrance would come in. So almost a 90% positive response that Cruiser Max Vibrance cereals was performing better than not treating at all, which is our true number one competitor. When we compare Cruiser Max Vibrance cereals to Cruiser Max cereals, there was just over a two bushel response with a 92% positive uh, confidence rating. When I started with, with Syngenta, my, one of my first roles was testing our early seed care brands like Helix that was talked about, Dividend. Back when, when I was in seed care, we were trying to get two bushels better than not treating with Dividend. That was our early goals and that was our early data. Now when I look at data like this, we are taking an elite seed treatment like Cruiser Max cereals, add, adding a new product like Vibrance to it, and we're getting a two bushel response over elite products. So I think that shows you where the, where the market has come since uh, back in 1998 when I was involved in there. So back working with Ted. In the last two years, I'm going to bring this down to a specific level on specific situations and, and specific fields. Working on 50 farms, we had the opportunity to work with 50 different seed, seeding uh, equipment scenarios. We had 50 different seed treaters. We had 50 different users. Ultimately, we had 50 different conditions on the field from direct seeding. Um, we even had a helper on this site, it looks like. But bottom line is we had an opportunity when you're bringing a product to market to work with, in all types of application equipment and drive it through a number of different tanks and different seating equipment. This was in uh, southwestern Saskatchewan. So uh, what we pulled out of here was um, not treating, Cruiser Max cereals that you could have used up till today, and Cruiser Max Vibrant cereals. Our seed care specialist, Mark Mercier, counted these, these plots and he went out of his way to give us a real view of, of what is happening in the field. He had 10 locations of six meters per location. So when we're talking in terms of confidence behind these numbers, we've got 60 meters in each treatment of counting the, the seedlings that arise there. So when we look at what Cruiser Max Vibrant Cereals is offering, a nice enhancement and a nice consistency in emergence. How does this look like a month plus after seeding. What we, what we show here is not treating. And remember, we had cool soil conditions and cool conditions across Western Canada this season. We see a, a plant that is struggling from not treating. We've got a thin plant stand. We've got a thin root system to Cruiser Max cereals better. And adding vibrance to the technology, Ted mentioned in his earlier presentation about rooting power. When you look at what vibrance does our, one of our, 
our comments behind Vibrance will be rooting power. When you look at the thickness of the roots, how nice and white they are, this shows the general root health and ultimately that drives the future growth of the plant and ultimately is a, a good crop establishment is what we're aiming for, which in the end yields, uh, ends up in a, in a positive yield. So what I like about following these ex specific examples is that we're able to follow it through to yield. So in this situation in southwest Saskatchewan, we've got a, a, a yield of not treating with Cruiser Max cereals and then a, a very nice enhanced yield by uh, adding vibrance to Cruiser Max cereals. So the, obviously in this situation, it's an extreme yield advantage over not treating, but this is real life scenario. This is uh, uh, all sites confirmed on, on the surveys that were mentioned earlier. These are, are the fields that these are taken from. So rhizoctonia uh, isolates taken from, from these and uh, that is part of the survey. So an excellent yield response by adding vibrance. Another option just north of Regina, we talk about soil-borne rhizoctonia and its effect on germination. When we look at these seeds, this is four days after planting. One thing that we do like to highlight when we're testing new formulations of seed care products, do these products have any negative effects on germination? We look at Cruiser Max Vibrant cereals off on the right. These are seeds that have imbibed and are starting to grow within, within four days in this situation in Saudi. This is just north of Regina. Untreated barely has started and uh, moving through uh, the other seed, seed treatment options have just started to imbibe. Following this site through, these are the emergence counts and once again, six meters per count on 10 locations at 60 meters. So very, very confidence rating in, in what we see here with Cruiser Max Vibrant cereals providing a great stand establishment. How does this look like in the field? Just over a month after seeding, you can see that same, same rooting power that we see from untreated Cruiser Max. And then you see a general, very good, vigorous stand, very big root system, nice large crown, and a very, very healthy plant stand that's leading into providing the next wave that is gonna to add to yield. When we combine what we see in, in the yield numbers, this is actually from a seed grower in Saudi, same trial that we've been looking at. Very interested in supporting his growers, very interested in new technology, very interested in finding out the data. So we're very confident in the data that was provided here. So comparing to Cruiser Max cereals, it was almost a four, well, it was a four bushel gain uh, with, with adding vibrance to the formulation. We'll move on to canola. And when, when it was mentioned that rhizoctonia and soil-borne rhizoctonia is a very, very, um, ex not only an expensive problem for canola growers, but it is a very, very uh, serious problem. This is, uh, as you can see by the stubble here, and we talk about pushing rotations, this is a canola on canola rotation. So not necessarily the best possible scenario, but maybe the best economic situation that this particular grower was working with. We're looking here at, at the impact of soil-borne rhizoctonia and what it can do to a, a plant stand. We have a weaker seedling, obviously. When we bring this uh, into a situation where we combine that with cool soils, we combine that with pushed rotations, we combine that with, with moisture, we combine that with just general attack of the seedlings, this is what you end up with a weaker plant. When we look at this at a closer level, so that plant removed, what rhizoctonia will do is, uh, you can call it wire stem, you can call it girdling, Bottom line is it cuts off the flow of nutrients, water, uh, fertilizer, everything that the plant needs to grow and ultimately you either result in post-emergence damping off that was talked about earlier or this doesn't yield very far. Ultimately, uh, canola growers have a lot of pride in what they grow and they're looking for the best possible options at protecting the plants and this is not what they want to see. When we look at, uh, this is actually right here in Alberta. This is a trial with Helix Vibrance, so with the Vibrance technology included, versus a standard. 
And in this case, uh, in talking to Ted, the, the standard was, was Helix Extra. So we're looking at a situation on a five-year plan. This grower uh, is alternating canola, wheat, canola, wheat, canola, wheat, back and forth. So when we talk about pushed rotations and rushing rotations and that opportunity not only to uh, break the cycle of rhizoctonia, but you'll also have volunteers that are keeping that level of rhizoctonia up at a certain level within the soil for the soil-borne infections. When we look at this here, what Helix Vibrance is able to do is improve that plant stand, get that plant establishment and crop establishment to a level where we can uh, produce a very, very good crop. To bring this to a very local level, and I thought I would end it here uh, in Red Deer, we talk about the impact of Rhizoctony on stand establishment. This just shows you previous technology to new technology. Through the surveys that were talked about earlier, there was isolates collected of Rhizoctonia. The isolate that was picked for this trial was tested virulent, which means it's going to impact the canola stand and infect the canola. So for these plots, the seeds were treated. They were also seeded with these strains of Rhizoctonia for maximum infection to try to stress out and see if there's any differences in how these new seed treatments perform. So you can see by not treating the impact of of the Rhizoctonia, that strain that was added to the seeding, obviously impacts the, the stand greatly. So this is ultimately the worst case scenario. This might be a stronger infection than you would see in your field, but ultimately affecting not treating your canola. Look at Helix Extra, providing an excellent plant stand versus what you see in the untreated with a full plant stand, but adding the vibrance to Helix Extra Look at the difference already starting to flower, where this is Helix Extra, this is Helix Vibrance, where you have an excellent option now for growers to manage Rhizoctonia. You have an excellent option for the seed companies to move forward with in treating their seed uh, for the 2013 season.